there we are. Right, well, hello and welcome everybody. Thank you very much for taking time inside on this absolutely glorious day. Um, but thank you very much for joining us. So today um, we're going to be running a session on knowing your vision, values and purpose. Um, today's event is hosted by Social Farms and Gardens in partnership with Tuvi Cymru. Um, and I'll just give a little bit more detail as to the project and the partners in one moment. Um, so today's event is uh, targeted at community supported agriculture groups and other community, other growing related community enterprises. So that focus really on community. Um, like we mentioned, we are recording today's event and it will be available on the Tuvi Cymru Knowledge Hub, um, which I'll share with you in a moment, and also the Social Farms and Gardens website. Um, I think it's it's really great that um, everybody's taken the time out today to attend. Um, this is something that's particularly relevant for new groups, but also for established groups. And sometimes just taking that time out to have a little think about where you are and hear other people's perspectives on on these uh, this topic can be really helpful um, because it's something you you don't want to get wrong. So just moving through my slides. Come on, computer. Oh, computer's gone slow. I can do too much. There we are. OK, so welcome. Um, I am Nick Perkins. I work for Social Farms and Gardens. Um, just to introduce my colleagues, uh, we have Sarah on the call also from Social Farms and Gardens. She is heading up our CSA support project. Um, and then there's a copy of our general email address. So any queries um, or questions that you might have or in terms of accessing the support that I'm about to just chat through, then please drop that um, CSA at farmgarden.org.uk um, as our, the main point of contact um, and Sarah would get back to you. Um, we also may have Sarah Gould on the call. Um, I know she was going to try and join us for a little bit um, from Tubby Cymru. We've also got Katie Jeffries, um, who will be supporting us in terms of uh, the Zoom today and will be keeping an eye on the chat. Um, there's a couple of us as well, um, other people from Social Farms and Gardens just having a listen in. I think Lucy and Lisa are on the call as well. Um, so just to introduce Social Farms and Gardens, we're an established organisation. We've been running just over 40 years. It used to be the Federation of City Farms and Community Gardens. We cover all Wales um, and we offer special, we, we are specialists in supporting communities to grow and manage green spaces. And we are currently able to offer support for community supported agriculture projects and we have a number of other projects around allotments, orchards. We also have the Edible Cardiff Network and we're starting up a new big project called Resilient Green Spaces, which has got a number of additional work streams, including uh, greener corridors, um, so community owned verges. Um, there's work around skills development in for younger people in horticulture and food hubs as well. So we've got lots of exciting things that we're going to be launching in the very near future. So this CSA project is a partnership between uh, Tuvi Cymru, um, which is hosted by Lantra and Social Farms and Gardens. Um, it is funded through the Welsh Government's RDP programme, which is part of the European Agricultural Fund for Rural Development. Um, we are able to support people to develop community supported agriculture projects and other growing related community enterprises with a focus on horticulture, although we do appreciate that CSAs can also involve meat and other different types of products as well as um, vegetables and fruit. So um, we um, have there's other strands of support also within um, Tavi Cymru, um, which I'll be mentioning in a minute, and but they will are able to offer support packages to all types of commercial horticulture and have a lot of specialist focus groups as well. So in terms of the support we're able to offer, we're able to offer tailored one to one support for projects, um, which is in the form of a, basically a bespoke 
package of support from specialized mentors on a wide range of subjects. Um, some types of uh, queries that we have already have are around funding, horticultural advice, outreach and community engagement, governance, setting up and also business growth. But we've um, does other work around business planning and uh, things like that. We are able to offer specialist planning advice and resources uh, from Lucy, who's on the call, um, and she heads up our community land advisory service and is a chartered town planner. So we're able to offer some support around planning permissions and uh, leases as well. We offer training delivery and workshops, uh, both well at the moment in virtually, but hopefully in person. And we've certainly got some site visits um, set up in the future, which we'll be sharing quite soon. Um, we're developing a suite of resources, which will be launched soon and will appear on the Knowledge Hub. And we've just had the first meeting of the CSA cluster group, which is quarterly meetings accompanied by a newsletter to facilita facilitate uh, networking and sharing opportunities. So this is just a screenshot of the um, Knowledge Hub on the Tavi Cymru website. So tavicymru.co.uk forward slash knowledge hyphen hub. Um, as you can see, there's a range of different subject areas. They've got lots of different resources around um, a whole suite of things, anything that um, is useful to horticultural and commercial growers. and as you can see on the right hand side there's a list of the different growers networks that they offer as well so all of those are free to join and get involved with if you sign up with ourselves then you would be eligible to get involved in any of these networks as well so we're happy to provide more information so on to today's event um, so in terms of why um, i wanted to host today I think um, a lot of groups are super enthusiastic to push forward um, in terms of achieving their goals really as quickly as possible. Um, but well, as opportunities present themselves along with the way, sometimes there can be differences in opinion um, between those people heading up the projects as to whether those opportunities are the right thing for the group. Um, and I think by putting this work in, sort of early stages and reviewing it along the way it can try and um, reduce any sort of disagreements or um, tension that may come um, further along the way so and as I've already mentioned we're not just talking about new groups we're talking about established groups and we appreciate that the types of work that you're all doing you want to be out and about you want to be growing um, and quite often the um, this sort of the more paperwork side of things can uh, really get in the way sometimes. But I think you may decide hopefully by the end of the session, that actually it is worth putting that time in up front just to, to get this sorted. So just to introduce, um, sorry, I don't know, can Kerry, can you mute possibly please? Thank you. Um, so just to introduce Megan, who will be uh, facilitating today's session. Um, she's a consultant, facilitator, coach and project manager. She's worked for 30 years with third sector and public organisations of all shapes and sizes to develop their skills and knowledge in order to meet new challenges. Uh, she strives to improve organisational performance, delivery and develop vibrant communities. Megan uses a solution focus and consensus building approach to bring people together and move organisations forward. Um, so I will hand over to Megan. Thank you, Nick. Um, yeah, I'm only 21. So the 30 years experience is a little bit yeah, misleading. No, I, ha I have been around for a while. And uh, years and years ago, when I first moved to Wales, um, I was involved in Cardiff City Farm. So I do have some understanding of the history of the movement and, and the movement away from solely being city farms to other sports, uh, other um, other projects like like community supported agriculture, which is which is fantastic. So, um, yeah, welcome. It's lovely to see you all today. Uh, we're it is going to be a bit of a whistle stop tour. We're going to finish at half past half past one. So we've got uh, that makes uh, yeah just over an hour. So it will be quite quite rushed. But this is an introduction or a refresher 
or a chance for you to just think uh, maybe these are some of the things that we might need to look at in our groups. So I'm going to share my screen, hopefully, if in a second, and um, should work out from the current slide. I think the internet's a bit slow. People need to pedal faster wherever they are at the moment. So we're going to be looking at the importance of having a group vision, values and mission. I'll, most organizations say they have them, but quite often they haven't revisited them for ages. And certainly new groups who are forming might miss this stage out. And what we say is it's really important to, um, to look at them. So the big question that every group, no matter how small, needs to be able to answer is why are we here? Why are we here? What are we, you know, what are we, why are we doing this? What are we going to do and not do? So what's the scope of our work? And uh, certainly with community groups, always easy to say we're going to change the world and we're going to do X, Y and Z. And sometimes that's not the most sensible thing. It's maybe best to be specific on your, your work. What are our group's values and principles and what's our bottom line? OK, so I'm going to go through those in a, in a minute, but First of all, I'm going to do a little bit of theory. Don't worry, I'm not a real theory person, but there was a, a man called Bruce Tuckman in uh, the 60s, and he came up with this theory of group development, and it certainly helped me. I've been part of many, many small groups, larger groups, organizations, international groups. And I have to be honest, at times there's tensions, or at times I think, this is great, this is going fantastically well. Other times where I think I want to leave. and sometimes it can help me using this this theory to take that step back and say where are we in our group in the stages of group development so the first stage that Tuckman said was uh, the first stage of, of any group uh, was forming and this is when the team's just been introduced everyone is very polite very pleasant to each other. You know, there's lots of, oh, this will be fantastic. And most people are excited to start something new and get to know other team members. So it's great. It's when you first maybe meet in the community center or even in the pub or whatever it is, even sometimes in people's homes. It's like, this is, this is gonna be great. And everyone's uh, enthusiastic, but also quite polite. The next stage that Tuckman suggested every group goes through might be short stage, it might take longer, is the storming. And that's the reality and the weight of completing the task at hand has hit everyone. And you think, gosh, we've signed up to do this, to you know, run a small farm in the depths of wherever, mid Wales. Actually, this is quite a lot of work. And uh, maybe I'm not so excited, I'm a bit daunted now. I now know the people I'm working with, so the need to be very polite is slightly wearing off. And sometimes personalities may clash. Sometimes groups, uh, this is when I go, you know what? I'm finding this person's uh, attitude or behavior or uh, just general ideas, not quite what I think or want. Um, I'm getting a bit irritated. And sometimes this storming can be a very, very, uh, short. It can be just one meeting where there's a bit of tension, maybe not even tension, that's too extreme. Other times it can be full-blown arguing, uh, not physically fighting, I, I hope, but fighting over what we're going to be doing. Are we going to be growing cabbages or are we going to be growing carrots? Well, I never signed up to grow cabbages. I only want to grow carrots. There's all sorts of debates happen at this stage. And what it's needed there is a, is a good a facilitative leader who listens to people, but who actually uh, moves the group on to the next stage, which is norming. And that's where people start to notice and appreciate their team members' strengths. It might be that I don't want to go on holiday with Bob, but I can recognize that he's a great financial uh, whiz or, uh, you know, uh, Samantha is fantastic at growing, but I might not want to spend too much time, but I recognize their strengths. It's also when the group start to settle into a groove. So they know how things work. They've got the admin sorted out. They know how to communicate with each other. They're meeting once a month. They're not arguing or, or confused about when, a, when a, a, the meetings are. So everyone is starting to contribute and work together as a more cohesive unit. 
And so you might be thinking, oh, I remember being that uh, at that stage in the group. Then there is performing the light blue stage here, working as one. And that's when the members of the group are really confident, they're motivated, and they're familiar enough with the project and the team that they can just, as I say, cook with gas, really get things uh, moving. They don't have to ask, how do I do this all the time? They, they know it. And they're actually delivering. They're on the same page and the phrase driving at full speed. So they're performing. They know what they're doing. Everyone's, everyone's you know, on it. And then we have the next stage, which is adjourning, which is either maybe at the end of a, a season, this celebration. Gosh, we did really, really well. We fed 100 families this, this year, and it was our first year. Um, or we've, we've done very well. We've, we've bought some land, whatever it is. It can be that sometimes projects finish here, that they're just a task and finish group and they disband. Sometimes after a, a, a particular period of time, the group actually says, you know what, this isn't the way that we're going to achieve our goals and we're going to disband the group. Sometimes it's called mourning as well, because there's a, although there's celebration often, there's sometimes sadness at the loss of what was going so well. You were performing, it was great. And now maybe, you know, maybe in, in your case, the winter's coming and we're, we're all going off to do our, our own thing. And then as you can see, it's a cycle. And if new members join the group, or new member or members leave the group, there's that adjourning and there's that mourning phase. But then when new members join, there's also, again, learning about each other, challenging each other. A new member uh, might join who is uh, uh, really interested in the project, but has slightly different views. So there might be some challenging is, no, the project that we do is done this way. If you want to grow kumquat, you go to another project. I'm making this up now. I probably should have thought of my vegetables before I started my fruit. Um, so this is a circular theory and uh, it, I find it quite helpful. And it is when there's been maybe I've lain awake at night going, what's happening? The group was, we were doing so well. We were meeting every week in the community group. Everyone was excited. Now there's some tensions, what's happening? this can help me. Or when I'm thinking, gosh, we're really cooking with gas, we're really performing, we've, you know, achieving so much. I'm also aware that that will change, that that won't always remain the same. So I find this quite a, a useful tool. You don't have to use it, but it can help you take a, a step back. And certainly when you're working with groups, if you're ever feeling stressed or, or at any point it's good to take that step back say how are we and also for you personally do I still want to be involved is this something I feel I, I want to carry on doing so that taking a step back is really important so I'm going to ask the group just briefly anybody been uh, at a, in a group that uh, where they can recognize that forming stage where they all felt, oh, this is great. And you were meeting maybe in the pub or in a person's house. Can anyone share? It doesn't have to be around community supported agriculture. It could be the Girl Guides. It could be whatever. Um, does anyone want to share their experiences very briefly of that experience of forming? Or you could talk about storming and norming and performing if you want, but anyone like to share? Don't be shy. I can share. Thank you, Cara. Lovely. Hi. Um, so for the last year, I've been organising volunteer days, um, gardening around town. Um, and yeah, it still does feel quite new. And there's constantly new kind of volunteers coming in. So um, kind of rolling through the forming stage quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, and with lockdown kind of slowing a lot of things down, it's made it kind of mm. quite hard, I think, to move from that stage. Mm. That's a really good point, actually, Cara, that lockdown and COVID, it, it, I'm sure, has affected many groups and either stopped them or just slowed that, yeah, slowed that process down um, and maybe heightened some of the need for effective uh, 
process and facilitated norming where you're getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I don't know how to say it. I, Fiona, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Oh, brilliant. Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, it's, I've, I've come across this several times. Um, I used to chair Sustainable Gwynedd, which was a broad sustainable communities group. Uh, we had this sort of early, very on, um, when we were trying to set up our uh, constitution uh, and the way that the organisation work. Uh, and we got over it um, very smoothly. It's quite a small number of people, so it was a little bit easier. And we had been working together for a while as a community group, so that also helped. Um, and uh, we're now in the Wales Real Food and Farming, a uh, group as well, um, going through something similar with more people coming in and out of the mm. of the organisation. So it's challenging, but it's something mm. that has to be done for people to to share a vision, I suppose. But it's mm. not easy. <laughs> it, 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 sometimes it can be remarkably easy, but quite often there can be just that little bit of uh, tension. And I, I don't know about you, but I've been in many, many groups. Um, you might have a, a group of 10 people coming together and by the end of that sort of forming process, actually you've only got eight. Two have decided, you know what, it's not for them. And that's okay. Um, that is okay. It's sort of natural way that that happens. But uh, what you're saying is getting that constitution, et cetera, ready is probably a bit easier with a small group. Uh, the, the key is to make sure that any new members sign up and understand what you're mission, values, and vision is, which we will be going on to in a second. Anybody else want to share? Or I can move on. Okay. I'm going to move on then, and I'm going to share my slides again. Um, let me see, share screen. There we are. Uh, okay. So the first thing I would say that is important for every group is to have a group vision. And that's an achievable dream for the future. And that word achievable is, is quite important. It's what, how you would like the world, really I should change this slide to your world to be like, because we are talking about your community. I mean, we all want a world where there's you know, no, no hunger, no famine, no wars, et cetera. But it's what you feel that your dream in wherever it is, in Gwyneth or in Powys, is going to be, or it could be in your local community of, say, Grangetown in, in, in Cardiff. It doesn't have to be a wide area. Your vision needs to be inspirational and motivational to the group. You could have it as a poster in your, your, uh, your office. It needs to inspire people not just to your group, but to beyond. So people need to know what on earth do they do? It doesn't limit the scope of the group, but it's not too vague. So reasonably general, but not, uh, not saying that you're going to change, yeah, have no wars in the world. It's lovely as I wish that we could all do that. I don't think it's necessarily achievable for one small community group. So Kai Tan, I uh, had a look at their vision and it's to supply good healthy food to the local community in a way that benefits and nourishes the earth and all life forms sustained by the earth. So that's nice. I know what that means. It's good healthy food, local community, and you're not destroying the earth. So that's Kai Tan, which is in the Gower. And I, the, here we are. Uh, without a clear vision, if you don't go through this process at the beginning of why are we here? It may, people may well work as individuals rather than a group. So they're not feeling that sense of a group and people can have their own agenda. It's not that they come with an ulterior motive to take over your group. It's just that they passionately feel about one thing, which might be slightly different than the rest of the group. And that means pe people can pull in different directions. But you, if you don't actually know what you're about, why you're there, you can't plan for the future. You don't know where you're trying to go. So I'm going to move on to the group values. This is something else that is really helpful if you can, I'll use the word thrash out at the beginning, but I hope it's not too much, too, too, 
too difficult. But for me, when groups don't do this, this is where they can really come unstuck. And they're your basic fundamental beliefs that guide and mot motivate your individual attitudes and actions. OK, but as group values there as a group, you need to agree them. So if you're going to be um, inclusive of all, if that's a fundamental value, uh, that means that if someone says, I have a, a, a member, a, a volunteer who has learning difficulties, I'd like them to be involved. And you go, oh, no, no, we're not, we can't deal with people with learning, because I've heard this, it's, it's terrible, but I've definitely heard this over my, my lifetime. If you're being inclusive, that your values are you do include people, you provide support for them, but it's important. So if someone in your group is saying that a particular individual or a group of people should not be involved, go back to your values. Has that been clearly set out who you want to involve? So some values should show, focus on beliefs, others may inform behaviors, okay? So, um, uh, uh, let me see, engagement. Um, my, um, let me think. I'll, I'll, carry, I'll talk about this in a minute. Uh, so values should be lived by everyone in the group. Okay. So if we're talking about going back to inclusivity and uh, every uh, somebody is on the, maybe the front desk and they say, oh, no, you can't come into our group. That's not uh, engaging and inclusive. So if someone is not uh, abiding by your values, values, you can tackle them in a supportive way, but you should be tackling them and you've got your values to go back to. They should be clearly and easily understood by all group members and beyond. And sometimes the wordsmiths in our world make values so complicated that your average person needs a thesaurus to understand them. So make sure they're easily understood. And Greenpeace International had personal responsibility and nonviolence, independence, and Greenpeace has no permanent friends or foes, which is an interesting one, which means that they will not uh, uh, exclude anyone or not work with, they will always be open to working with a group. Um, so they're no permanent friends or foes and they're promoting solutions. If you don't have agreed values, then you can have real conflict and it can be very difficult to address. Because if I say I don't want people from Neath Put Talbot to come to my group, it's only Swansea members, but we've said our values are we're inclusive to everyone, then people can tackle me on that. Yeah, and they should. OK, I'm going to move through the next and then we'll have a quick debate um, or discussion. Uh, your mission. And this is something else, this sort of jargon is your mission. What's this? People have a mission statement and the mission statement of social farms and garden is, is to improve the health and well-being of individuals, communities and the environment through nature based activities. So it's nice and clear. I know what you're about. I know who the beneficiaries are. It's communities and individuals. OK. What the organizational group will do for them, I know that City Farm, uh, sorry, social farms and gardens um, will be uh, running nature-based activities and realistic outcomes that the group wishes to achieve. It's to improve the health and well-being of individuals. And I think that's realistic um, from uh, the, the work that you do. If you don't have a clear mission, it means, again, that the, an individual can take the group in their own desired direction, okay? They say, we're only going to be working with young children when actually social farms and gardens, of course, that's a real you know, target audience for you, but it's also elderly people. It's people throughout the, the age groups. Um, if you don't have a clear, a clear mission, it can mean that you don't work with the people that you'd originally felt you need you set up to work with. And again, this lack of clarity in where the direction, the strategic directions and the outcomes it wants to take. So I'm going to stop sharing. I, I've worked with many organizations and where there, and I'm usually brought in where there's problems. They tend to not be brought in when everything's hunky dory. So, and often it is because the group has lost its direction. They don't know why they're there, or there's particular individuals have their own agenda and who haven't signed up to the mission, the values. 
and the vision at the beginning. And then it's about tackling those people, discussing, tackling sounds very aggressive, but it's actually discussing, what do you mean then? What are you wanting? Do we need to change our vision? Or is it that you need to understand what the vision of the group is? Or maybe we, we, you need to go and form another group. And that sounds really vicious. But I have to say, that's what I found with sometimes it's actually people need to go off and do their own thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. Has anyone got any uh, examples or questions about visions and values and your mission statement? Has anyone got? Has, have you started to look at these? Have you, have you got nicely, clearly printed out examples? Anyone? You're all quiet today. Jeremy. I'm, I think for us, we, we, we don't have all this written down or decided on because we're still sort of evolving. Right. Um, and we didn't want to restrict ourselves at the very beginning to something that then within a few months we'd already broken yeah. as a group. <laughs> mm. So it's, we, yeah, we, we, I think these things are things we need definitely. Mm. But I think um, partly the way we were set up and the sort of, we weren't 100% sure where we wanted to prioritise. These are things that we need to work on now. But if we'd done it earlier, it might mm. have backfired. So you're, in a sense, still in that farming stage. You're still figuring out what you're going to be doing. What I would say is um, don't take too long and don't keep your options open too much. You can always change your vision, but it needs to be with group agreement. If you don't know what you're trying to do, people won't know what you're trying You know, the group actually won't know what you're trying to do. And I was involved in a group where um, oh, they were lovely. They really wanted to change the world. So before you knew it, they had all sorts of extra projects that were being bolted on to the main project. So they were, you know, well, they were trying to do so many different things. And the phrase that a friend of mine uses, spreading the jam too thin. You have got such an amazing project uh, with, with uh, community supported agriculture probably having a theatre group associated with it and all that that involves is probably a lovely idea, but maybe keep doing what you're really good at. Because um, uh, we all know when we try and do things that we're not so good at, that it can go a bit unstuck. And groups, I think it is really good to focus, certainly in the first stages, quite narrowly on what you want to do. You can always expand it out later, but I would always, a word of caution, if you're doing something well, then carry on doing it. You know, you don't have to try and move into your real adventure zones of theatre. I don't know why I'm thinking of theatres, but they are, or pottery on, 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 the, uh, the, um, on, the, on the farms that you're in. And that's something to bear in mind. And I have a, a, a good friend who is the most extraordinarily enthusiastic person. And they would be going, yes, let's have a theater, let's have a pottery, let's have a cinema. And people get excited by that. And before you know it, growing your cabbages and carrots and all of that gets lost. So that's why keep it, keep it narrow. They can always set up a, a theater group that happens to be on your land, but it's a different group. Um, so just, just be careful. Nick. I was just going to say we get a lot of groups that approach us and say we want to start running a big educational program doing outreach to schools um, and helping low income families and all sorts and then they ask us where they can get the funding for schools outreach programs. And I think the reality is that it's not something that, I mean, you can get some small pots of funding, but nothing particularly sustainable. So I think it's really important to, to focus on, on your core, where you want to be headed, what things could be mixed in in the future, but then try and think about how to make that sustainable amongst the business model and not get completely sidetracked onto plowing all your surplus into educational programs and then you realize that your polytunnel gets wrecked in a storm or something and you've not got that, those funds. Mm -hmm. So it is just really understanding that scope from early on, I think can be really helpful. And then when new members come in and go, let's do this or let's focus entirely on education, you can you can say, but th this is why we're here. Please look at our our uh, our vision 
and our mission statement and uh, these are the values that we abide to. It, it gives you something to anchor your project on. It might be a tiny bit boring thrashing out for hours what your values are, or it can be. What I would say is use a, a, use a reasonably participant. Well, I'll go on how to do that, but uh, you know, try and make it as fun as possible, but it is a, a crucial step. Okay, I'm going to um, go on to the next bit and then we're going to be moving into some groups. So the first slide I've got here is how, how on earth do you write a vision statement? You'll have these slides um, and it can send them to you. I would say think five to 10 years in the future is quite a good way of looking at it, but I don't know your specific groups and it might be 20 years. You know, farming is a different, different beast. It could be a year, you know, it could be three years, whatever suits you. Um, determine your group's real purpose. You know, why are you here? And one good way of thinking about a vision is what does success look like? What are people saying about the organization in five years, 10 years time? What, when you, if I visited, what would I be saying about the organization? What would I be hearing? What would I be seeing? I might be seeing children running around, but I would maybe be seeing people working on the land, people coming to get um, food, uh, people making beautiful meals, you know? Um, so go through those, think about this, the time, uh, time that you're thinking of, what's the purpose, and then describe what success would look like. It needs to be clear. Take time and involve everyone, I would be saying, if you can. Right. I, sorry, I don't know why my slides don't move on. Um, how to agree your values. Now values, I've spent, I spent Saturday morning discussing in great depth the values of an organization that's been there for 30 odd years. They, they know their values, they know them, but people keep on, because they're, they're not written down, people keep on saying, but what are our values? And actually, if we asked them and got them all to write down 10 words that describe their values, I bet you they'd all come to the same ones. But start including everyone in the group. Write them down is one thing that I'm not here, but make sure you do write them down. Reflect individually first on what's important to them. So doing, uh, so I'm a, a real fan of uh, an old fashioned piece of paper and a pen. Okay, say to people, and it's a good way of working with groups. First of all, for one minute, think yourself what your values are and what the values are that you would like for the group and then share them. And that allows the quiet people to have a little, and the reflective people to have a little bit of a, a chance to think. And the chatterboxes like me have to actually sit down and really think what I mean rather than yak on. Share and thoroughly discuss everyone's views. It's important to hear everyone's views and agree on a list of everyone's values that people, of the values that people can commit to. Because if they're working for an organization that says X, Y, and Z, they need to be living that. They need to be uh, really signed up for it. Make sure everyone agrees what the value means and what it looks like in action. And that phrase, what it looks like in action, because I do get a bit fed up with some organizations' values. There's a great one, I think it's values, of IKEA. And there's a big thing this morning about on the news about how bad IKEA has been. Have a look at IKEA's missions and value. You might laugh because it doesn't feel to me it's what IKEA is about. But make sure we know what it looks like in action. And take time, listen and share as some tips. Yeah, the IKEA one, I might try and fish it out later, see what it said. Um, now, the group mission statement, and a lot of uh, funders actually say, what's your mission? So you actually have to have these things for lottery or whoever it is. So a few ways to draw up a group's mission statement in, is to agree why you're doing it, who you're helping, and what you're going to do. And I would say it's worth saying and not to do. And, and that's from bitter experience of groups trying literally to change the world. And maybe... It might help your group to say, we're going to run, we're going to um, uh, form a farm, a community uh, farm, whatever it is, but we are not going to run a hostel for homeless people. Or I know that's maybe a bit extreme, but it's quite good to define what you are doing and what you're not doing. The, I would say that when you're looking at mission statements, that a core group 
it's good to get a core group developing statements. If you try and do this as a group of 100 people, you'll be there forever. And the wordsmiths will just, uh, it'll be, yeah, never ending. So I find a core group develops a range of statements and shares options, but it might be that core group has used focus groups to develop the statement. I do think that it's important though to come back to whole group discussion because your whole group needs to agree it. Um, and it could be that you vote by group members, not just the, the boards, the steering group, that all your members uh, do agree on the final statement. Just think, consider these issues. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is just try and stop sharing for a second. Has anyone got any questions? Where we're going to in a minute go into groups to talk about some of the issues that you might have or some of the things you might be pondering. Anyone got any questions about mission and vision and values? The lesson I'd like you to take away is they, they are actually quite important. They're like, yeah, 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 we know what they are. We know what our values are. This particular group had never written them down and, and the group needed to write them down because values, it's so important. Oh, critical to all of their work, more than a lot of other organizations. Um, so spend some time, write them down, have them maybe printed out on your, uh, in your office, cross stitch them, have somebody cross stitch them um, uh, on your, and put them on your wall. Okay. Any questions? So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into groups. And um, how many groups do you feel we should have, Nick? Because we've got a few of us. Uh, yes. I'm just looking at who the practitioners are and who the uh, facilitators are. And to be honest, we may be just as well just staying as a whole group, actually. OK. All right. No, that's fine then. Um, well, except maybe if we work a little bit in groups just so people can have a little uh, share in more qu quiet groups because people are there's um i think we should go in a group for a short period of time shall we do that okay, or can just we two yeah let's do two the reason is i think maybe it's easier for people to share in smaller groups because we are still quite a large group um so we've got uh if I, if I, yeah, okay, let's whatever so what I'm going to put in implemented. Um, oh no, it's not with me. Met. There we are. Oh, oh, I don't know. I'm recording and things. It's mystery, yeah. mystery. I'm going to share my screen for um, group. Let's see, Jamboard one, and we've been. Thank you, everyone. Putting a few more things in, and what I thought we've got. What have we got? We've got about uh, ten minutes to just have a bit of a discussion. So if we spend about five minutes on each um, Jamboard, and I might ask someone from group one to talk some of the things through, not me. Um, so I will attempt to share my screen. There we are. Can you see that? Is that okay? Yeah, things are being moved around, which is great. Um, who would like from group one, um, there was Cara, there was Jeremy um, and there was uh, Robin. Um, who'd like to maybe share? Go on, just unmute and shout out. Any any light bulb moments or any thoughts that you'd like to share with the whole group? Um, yeah, so I think what we discussed was um, having lots of people with lots of different ideas, but no um, kind of urges or aims to kind of do the ideas and I'm um, coming to you and kind of talking rather than doing and um, how having really clear vision can help to keep that in check um, and help kind of facilitate the people who are actually doing rather than the people who just want to talk about how great their ideas are. And this idea of doers and grafters and people who actually do the work um, so I'm, I'm for many reasons, but I'm slightly, uh, especially in COVID, I suggest that you don't meet in the pub 
to have meetings because apart from a, a drink or two means people get even more enthusiastic about their ideas and it does exclude people obviously but um uh i'm not saying make your meetings slightly uh you know cold and wet and drafty with no tea but make sure you do get the people who are really passionate and you're not just there to have a chat um, because we've got here burnout. If you're the one who's the worker delivering, gosh, uh, being told, and why don't you do this? And I think one of the things, Cara, you said was people would say to you, why don't you do this? Not why don't we do this, but it was you. <laughs> so Cara was expected to be doing all the work. Um, anything else from group one? Mm. I think the idea of... Um being business minded like not not shying away from that because you need to sustain the charity or the group um yeah and yeah. Rob, robin yeah. would you like to add to that um, um it's just about the financial sustainability really you know it's all very well having lovely ideas but you you have to think about how you're going to sustain them so i think it's just really important when you're prioritizing to make sure that a financial analysis is part of that so if you think, okay, we're gonna we're gonna make all our money by growing veg or whatever, we won't have much time to do other stuff. Whereas if you want to go down the education route and you're gonna go down a grant route, you have to prioritize for that and decide how you're gonna do that, uh, whether you can invest in fundraising and so on. So it's those those kind of dilemmas you need to work through, uh, probably quite an early stage. But the financial aspect is important within that. Yes, until the uh, the capitalist state is overthrown, we are where we are, and um, that's the world we live in and it, for one particular group i worked with was like well money isn't what's driving us and i thought yeah but it's what pays the rent on your building and and they were some of them were so naive really um and if you want to provide low-cost food for your local community then you need to be you know you need to be business-minded because no you know if you're if your you know lettuces are three pounds each then they can't afford them because your costs are so high because you're not getting in income from selling things or getting grants so it, it's all part of the big circle Thank, thanks, Robin. Um, and that, are we here to grow or educate or in what proportion is, uh, probably needs to be a continual discussion, isn't it? At different stages of your organization and your group is uh, how much are we gonna educate? Um, no point in getting a group of children from the local school if you just got a window box of with a couple of, uh, you know, I don't know tomatoes in you, you need to have something there that will uh, draw them but how much do you can't focus on growing rather than getting the community involved is, is a is a bit of a challenge shall we move to group two so now if i do this can you see a different jamboard does that come up does that look different nicola is that number two yeah yeah great okay group two who would like to share from group two maybe not nick because she's been doing the talking yeah i, I can okay. share um, thank you share um, thanks rob anyway um yeah so for, for us and another csa that we're sort of uh, that are not far away from here um one of the challenges is that um is the expectation of your csa members so we're actually setting up as a business so we're not setting up as a community organization um so um i mean we haven't sort of put out our membership to people yet so we haven't but um the, the other the other people that set up csa what they found was that there was a sort of misunderstanding around what being a member and what a share was so some people thought that they would own part of the business as ha having a share and things like that so uh, it mm. was just you know it's just about that sort of um yeah needing mm. to sort of be really clear about what uh, you know, being a member entails and and how they can be sort of involved in the project and and what uh, yeah what being a member means really mm. so that sort of yeah being clear about that right from the start. Um, sorry to interrupt you, but I do see that your constitution or your mems and arts, if you're a business, is absolutely vital. And we tend to go a, a lot of charities go. I don't know where our constitution is. 
where they bring out something that it's not electronic and it's got coffee stains on it and that's the only copy they've ever had and honestly I well I threw one out just recently that was just like that I should have kept it for you know framed it um uh membership people think membership people get very confused they feel then that they can make decisions on exactly what the the group should do so I don't want any carrots grown on the ground I'm being you know stupid here but I don't want any carrots grown on the farm I am a member and you have to do what I say I mean people do get they just don't they're not clear so that's really important point you've made there Rob be really clear to people what they're signing up to whether they're on the board or a company director or a member or just somebody coming in to buy produce uh, be clear or you can become a cropper what else would you like to share from group two? Do you want to carry on, Rob? Okay, yeah. Um, so it's, it's just, um, I guess, talking about that sort of, you know, dynamic, the sort of fluid dynamic of groups. So you've got um, new people joining, others leaving. Um, so how do you sort of you know manage that really that was sort of one of the uh, mm. challenges and then the other sort of challenge that was set up um, is just um, that sort of burnout of people involved with the group um, you know um, you know the admin sort of responsibility but also you know delivering you know um, mm. you know delivering all the outcomes that you're looking to do um, and uh, um, so yeah, so we had a bit of a sort of discussion um, around that. So again, it was sort of you know, in terms of the new members and things, that sort of clear vision and, um, and values and things like that, so that people know what they're coming into, um, and you know how um, how it how it worked, um, and that sort of managing expectation, sort of from the start as well in terms of what you know, what you're actually looking to achieve and. Um, and then also recognizing where you know you're being, you know, put under huge strain and uh, like the admin, and maybe you need to have a paid someone or you know, look to funding or look to look at your business model about how you can fund a, a paid administrator, mm -hmm. so you're not having to do the admin, which is probably what most volunteers are least interested in. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, uh, I see a few nods there, admin. That that word burnout came up in our group as well. Um, have you found maybe as as a group, maybe if I I'll stop sharing now, um, that some people leave just because they just find it too much. They're doers, as we say, they're grafters, but they get they get burnt out. Have people found that with their groups? Um, yeah, I've, I mean, not so much with growing groups, but um, other groups that mm. I've been involved with um, mm. definitely burn out. Mm. Massive, massive issue, uh, particularly when people are doing something they really care passionately about because mm. they tend to give, you know, as much as they possibly can and then, you know, just hit a point where they can't mm. give any more. And, uh, and it starts to impact on their sort of, you know, just ability to <laughs> live, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, I've seen a lot of, a lot of that. Um, yeah. So that sharing of responsibility and being a cohesive group can really help to stop individuals, in a sense, going off on their own or taking the burden of the whole group on their shoulders. And I think that's, again, that whole group dynamics and uh, the group dynamic and being clear on why you're all there and, and be a tight group that deals with challenges, understands why you're there and, and tackles issues. You don't have to be, you know, wagging your finger. You can be saying, you know, Bob, you, you seem a bit unhappy or, you know, Bob, I noticed that you've been doing all of the admin. This is not uh, necessarily fair. We'll, we need to make sure that we support you because we want to keep you. So it's actually taking that step back, I think, again, and looking at the group, looking at the individuals, trying to figure out what motivates them uh, and, and, and supporting people. Being, being together as a group um, can really help. And that's you know your values i'm sure will be supportive and inclusive and engaging and if you're not doing that for the people who are actually part of the core team then you know you can come a cropper but 
Yeah. It's right. almost establishing those group roles as well, which is something that in an ideal world would happen mm. naturally as the group evolves. But, um, and I think people need to be clear about what they can offer um, because mm. you said doers, but actually I think yeah. groups can quite often end up filled up with people who love coming to the meetings, but actually haven't got the capacity to take mm. things forward. And that's where I think um, when you've got directors like like Rob and Zoe, they can end up just to the taking everything on and, and ending up with that burnout. So mm. it is mixing um, the group, well, making sure you've got enough people that can take things forward and potentially giving roles as advisors rather than maybe a full group member if if you've got people that really can't do work in between other meetings and um what you're doing is um is so so important and exciting and you know your projects are amazing it's 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 wonderful and, and it gives you hope and especially with covid i'm hoping that this sort of um your sort of project will be uh just yeah in every community really or in the environs of every community that's what I would hope um, and I think there is an appetite for that but um, yeah g getting your structure right and getting your being clear on what you're here to do and and like I say what you're not going to do so have a clear goal um, is is really important I think otherwise you can you know it can be it can be tough but what you're doing is amazing and you know, I, I'm just, well, I'm just in awe of you because I go out into my little garden and I don't do very much really all. I used to do things. So, so you know, I think keep on going, but make sure you do have your a time to reflect. Take that time out to say, hang on, how are we doing? Let's look at it from, um, an, uh, take an outside person's pers perspective. You know, what, what's happening? Maybe where are the conflicts? Where are the sticky bits? Uh, where are the bits that are a bit of log jam? that we need to maybe alter um, can really, really help you. So, and also one of the things is, and Rob and Zoe, so you're setting up a company. Is it just gonna be yourselves, the two of you running it? In some ways, you know, small is beautiful. So I would be slightly weary about having huge groups that are managing uh, uh, your projects. Keep it reasonably tight, but bring new people in all the time because there's always people who are moving away or whatever happens, they, they for whatever reason, they, they have to bow out. So I think, you know, constantly take that step back, go and get yourself a coffee and say, right, how's the group today? Do it maybe on a monthly basis. Where are we, where are we doing well? It can really, really help. I mean, just it, to yeah, sort of sum sorry. up a little bit from me, I will say that certainly having, if, if you're involved in a group, it can be very difficult to take that step back and to really revisit these things. So I would say for anybody, any groups that are eligible, they're based in Wales and come under a community growing or CSA enterprise that wants to set up, then we would be able to offer you an external facilitator to be able to support sort of reviewing either reviewing or getting these set up and actually just running a one-to-one -one workshop with your group so please bear that in mind and i've just put in the chat um a link and it would be helpful if you if you wouldn't mind just spending a, a second it should take you to what's something called a mentimeter which should ask you uh, for three key insights or learning from today's session and if you wouldn't mind popping them in it doesn't take it's more words rather than sentences so just dab anything in and it would be helpful for us but um and i'm not sure if you're from further afield outside wales i presume social farms and gardens uk will have some form of support for non-Welsh groups? They might, worth a yes. try. Yes, I mean, there's certainly signposting that we can do if you send, um, but we can always forward emails if you mm. want to point them at us. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think we will be sending out a bit of a, a quick feedback form as well as a result of today. But yeah. uh, thank you very much, everyone, for attending and taking the time out. And we'll let you know as well once this is up um, on the YouTube in case you want to share it with other group members. Yeah. So. And thank you for contributing. It was really, it's always fascinating. And, and all I can say is the, the, the issues that you're facing, they're not new. They're what many, many groups um, uh, uh, have. Um, but, you know, most groups continue and flourish. They do have sticky bits on the way, but yeah, if they've got their vision and mission uh, and values sorted out at the beginning, it really can help. So 
good luck go forth and garden and uh yeah and grow and grow oh gosh that sounds very cheesy doesn't it yeah <laughs> okay thank Take you very care, much then. everybody bye bye thank bye. you thanks bye bye